Hey, hey, welcome back. So we are going to be working on this thing again. Now, as you can probably remember from the last video that I made, this turned out cosmetically pretty good. It's a Seaberg LS3 jukebox, but I bought it for not a lot of money, but unfortunately, like everything about it was uh, as arguably, except for the outside, was ruined. The inside, all the guts were bad. Um, the mechanism was rusted solid from mouse excrement. <laughs> uh, there was a colony living in there for years and years and years. So uh, I made the decision that I would just try to get rid of it for the shell. Maybe somebody wanted to use it for something or convert it into a Bluetooth scenario. And then I'm like, well, why don't I just do it? And I kind of had an idea how I was going to. One, everything on the inside of this is junk. So all that needs to come out and it would have to get painted. So that'd be basically step one. Step two is what would you put in it? Well, I've got a couple of receivers, you know, like uh, surround sound systems, stereos that you can have subs with and everything else. Got a couple of those laying around that aren't doing anything. They're not really worth a whole lot, but they're good receivers. They put out a fair amount of power. And I had some old tower speakers that the box was bad on. These were techniques, I think is how you say it. But, I mean, the speakers were legit. I mean, they were that tall. They were huge. And with the right amp, you could crank that thing up and people two, three streets away could listen to the music with you. So I'm thinking, I have all these speakers, and if I can find a way to put them in here and use the receiver that I have, I've got several to pick from, but I'll just pick one that I know that's good. I'll put it in there. And then all I really need to do is make sure that the lights work and figure out how I'm gonna plug everything in. So if I'm gonna do a receiver, it needs to have a plug-in. I'm gonna buy an adapter that will fit in there too and plug into the receiver so that you could use Bluetooth. Then you have the option for a CD player, of course, if you wanted to do that. I've got a couple 50 disc and even 300 disc, uh, you know, um, carousel type um, additions that you would have to your home system like that, that you know, could throw, get thrown in there. You could hook your TV up to it. <laughs> you know, I mean, the options are kind of endless because that's what it was originally set up for, but... I kept everything from these speakers, including some of the wiring and the capacitors that were in them. And now it's just a matter of kind of stuffing it all together. So I figure I'd bring you along for that. So first step is to get everything out. Um, I'm not gonna bore you with any of that stuff. I'll just get rid of it. The last video, you kind of saw what it looked like on the inside, pretty sad state. So we'll just kind of skip that part. I'm gonna get the mech out the control unit, the amp, any wiring that is not needed. I'll get rid of all of that stuff and then we'll kind of go from there. So stay tuned. All right. Don't mind all the stuff I have all over the place. Just take a look. Last time we'll see it like this, hopefully. So I'm going to try to clean the rest of this out with the vacuum best I can. Get rid of those horns up top they're destroyed and then man just turn the rest of this black spray paint it all black I've got flat black paint it's cheap way to get it all looking uniform and tidy these horns are junk so they're going in the garbage so there you have it one last look at this nasty, old, gross-looking jukebox. It'll look clean next time you see it. All right. Sorry, I was kind of in a rush there. I was racing the sun. I didn't realize how late it was. And uh, you know how that goes. So 
here's what I came up with. Now, I was painting some of this at night, but there's the bottom rail. That looks a little bit better. I'll go over it with another coat. But how about that? That's a lot better. It doesn't smell anymore, which is great. I still need to do a little bit of painting over here. I want to tidy these wires up a little bit. I'm going to get rid of those. These go up and feed the display. And I think they grab some of this. I don't know. But either way, it's coming out. But I wanted to make it look presentable. Now there's a shelf that slides in right here. I'm going to cut out a new piece of wood because that one's kind of messed up. But I want to have a shelf in there so you can put the receiver on it. And again, have some room for maybe a CD changer. And that little Bluetooth thing isn't going to take up much room. It's just, you know, size of your hand, basically. And that's the platform I have to start with. So now I got to figure out how am I going to get these speakers retrofitted. The thing that I'm kind of perplexed with, and probably part of why these speakers sounded so good, was, you know, here's a 12. Here's another 12. But for equalization and recoil and response, that's a 10. There's another 10. And that's where basically most of the base comes from. And then the rest that I have here is going to be more mid-range tweeters, high pitch stuff, etc. So the high pitch stuff with a little bit of modification should fit in here no problem. I'll put, there's four, I think, two little tweeters and then two mids. I'll try to stuff those up in here. I'll have to make another board that goes across here to hold them in. And then obviously the 12s will go there. And I'm not really sure what to do with the 10s. I want to use them because I could hold concerts with these speakers. They were so good. And I feel like if we lose the 10s, that's going to take away from our, from our awesomeness. But I just don't have anywhere to put it. You know, I could try to put it right here, or at least one of them, right? But what's directly in front of that? Well, the lights are going to go right across here. And then there's this panel. So, and it says Seaberg on it. So, not that I couldn't lose that, but really I'd just be pounding sound right into a piece of metal. I don't really know how I could do it. I mean, there's obviously a lot of room down there to put them, but aside from drilling a hole in the side, you know, kind of an idea I had was, well, there's a coin door that's missing over here. Oop, I forgot to paint that. Oh, well. Um, so there's a coin door over here and there's already a big hole. You know, maybe this 10 would cover this up. So let's take a look and see how that would go well the coin re return is kind of in the way but and eh, it just I just don't like it it wouldn't obviously sit like that it would sit like this and I'd have to figure out some sort of cover for it so you don't have kids walking up to it or babies or whatever just poking holes in the speakers you know maybe like some mesh grill or something I could do that but then that sound is protruding out sideways and, you know, it doesn't really help us in here. And I'd have to build a box on the flip side of this so that the sound isn't just vibrating everything in there. So I might have to just not install the tens. But I'm going to use all the wiring that came with it in the speakers. Like I said, there's little boards with uh, capacitors and such. I'll probably replace some of them because they look kind of toasty. But... We'll get those mounted up in there. And then as far as the wiring goes, the switch on this ended up being bad, so I got rid of that. So I either need to put a new flip switch in here and try to convert 
it so that I can put, you know, like a, a power strip down there. Or I could put, you know, another fuse back in that and just use that one. That's where all the lights hook up into. Or at least, you know, this, this light. And then there's two that will go right there. So I'm kind of torn on that. But I think for now, probably what I'll do is I'll solve for this. I'll go ahead and get the big ones put in there. And I'll devise a way to put those four speakers in there. And then we'll just see where the project goes. I'm going to leave the wiring in there for the tens in case I decide to change my mind. But again, the only place I can really see that going is to cover that hole and then put one on the other side just exactly in the same spot. And if I do that, I'm going to have to be cutting. I'm going to have to disassemble a lot of this and cut a lot of that out. And that's just a lot of work versus me just making some sort of panel that I can screw in right here and cover that up. And then we just lose the tens. You'd think with something this big, you'd have a lot of options, but you know, since these are plastic, you can't put them facing right into it. It'd be better not to have them at all. It's going to do a shake everything in the bottom and the sound's never going to get out. So one step at a time, I guess, but it basically just a low buck. How can we save this decent looking jukebox shell? The parts, again, were all completely garbage. I can show you a video of what that all looks like out of it. But maybe there's some parts inside that are good. But for the most part, I'd feel bad. Even if it all worked, I'd feel bad selling that to somebody in the state that it was in. And it would cost too much to fix. This isn't a super desirable model. Um, while I think the Apollos are cool, you know, compared to a lot of the other ones, they're just not as flashy and they don't have as much going on and people don't really gravitate towards them like they do the other ones. So let me get busy with that and I'll show you what I come up with when the speakers are all mounted in there. All right, so quick update is using eighth inch plywood. Just made a cover to go over this. It'll stick out a little bit from where it was, but that'll at least get me close. And then I'm gonna evenly lay these speakers, the little guys out on this. And so I'll pop a couple holes in. I do have a big hole saw. Maybe I'll do that because that'll be easier than a jigsaw, but either way, um, I'll lay them out evenly on here. And then once I'm done, I'll sand this off quick and then mount it up here and see what I have to cut out. Cause those little mid range, I don't know what they are, like three inch speakers or whatever, won't quite fit in here. One thing I was worried about is this top piece as you cover or as you close this latch, like how much space do you actually have? And it's like three quarters of an inch or more. So this little bit of plywood and those speakers aren't gonna be much of a aren't going to be much of a hassle, I don't think. And then when I go to drop the speakers in, I'll just have all the wires connected to them already. And um, I'll just drop it in its place and screw it down. I'll probably put some caulking around the bottom and in the middle, just so that there's no vibrating from that. And we should be good to go. So I'll cut a few more holes and... We'll go from I had to do a few modifications, but I got it all cut out. Just used a hole saw and I had to space it down a little bit because I didn't want to have to deal with clearancing anything up on top. So I had to eat a little bit of that out, but I think that's going to be pretty cool. So what I'm going to do now is I'll probably go through vacuum all this out. Um, set the speakers in there quick just to mock it up and look at it. And then I'll pull everything out. I'm going to paint this black. I'm going to paint the rest of that all black so that it looks nice and uniform. And then I'll let that dry for a bit before I install it. And then, like I said, I've got some black, just like painter's caulking 
but essentially I'll go down and around and fill all the way around here because I just don't want it to leak air. Not so much so that the subs like are crazy because they have this hole already, but uh, I don't want it to vibrate. So that caulking will give it some insulation against that. So yeah, I'll show you a picture here in a second of what it looks like with them just kind of mocked in and then we'll go for the gold with the paint. Yeah. So there you have it. It's all mocked up. Fits in there pretty good. Got a few things I need to clean up. The openings for these two guys are just a little bit bigger than what those speakers are. So I'm going to end up drilling, you know, holes right on the very far outskirts of it. And then that way I can mount those in good. Uh, I cut the hole a little bit too big for these, but I didn't have, I didn't have anything in the middle. I used one of those Milwaukee hole saws. They work pretty good. If you don't get killed using them, they kick back pretty hard. It's ridiculous. Or maybe I just don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Anyhow. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and I'll paint it. I'm going to take these speakers back out. I noticed on this one, I need to fix it. It's got a little punch and a hole in it. I don't know when that happened, but I'll fix it. Coffee filters is what I like to use. And Elmer's glue. And then you just let it dry. I know that sounds ridiculous, but I've fixed several speakers that way. And they're all still going. So that is the way to do it. Then when I'm done letting it all dry, uh, again, I'll wire the speakers up how they're supposed to be. Haven't really decided if I want these things to be exposed like this. So probably what I'll do, I might just cut, you know, behind this, I might just cut a little hole in the box and put them there and then route the speaker wires, you know, up through the side or something to them so you don't really see them. Or heck, I mean, I could just mount them in the box somewhere and they're hidden already in there. I just have to get the speaker wires in there. I don't know. Not that important, I guess. But we're making progress little by little. So I'll paint this. I'll show you where I'm at when I'm done with that. And then we'll work on getting a shelf made so I can put the other radio in there. And I want to have one that has a sub hookup because I don't know how much bass this is going to produce without those tens. It used to just pound you. It was ridiculous how awesome these speakers were, but I feel like I'm really losing quite a bit with taking those tens out. So I want the option to have a sub. Not necessarily in the box. It could be, I suppose. There's enough room in there for sure. But, you know, one that you can just run the wire in the back and then put it somewhere in the room. Or maybe this is sitting in the corner of a room and the sub's just behind it. You know, whatever. Got to keep our options open. So that's it for now. I'm going to cut this one here. And I'll put another video up once I'm a little bit further. Thanks for watching. Subscribe and like. Comment. Maybe this is a great idea. Maybe I'm an idiot. I'd like to hear from you either way. Later.